Young McCree want to give a moment of silence to the, the females who have been discovered dead in Detroit and also to the ones that's missing. I want all of us to think about how the news is portraying these females to desensitize us. The news will say that they all was on a website that's an escorting service and make us look at them as just prostitutes that's out here. That's to desensitize our outrage that it's a serial killer out here killing young black women. This is a growing trend. Young black women have been being killed by serial killers across the nation. This happened somewhere else in the Midwest. I don't remember, but I did a video about it. And uh, I posted on the African Army, our brothers need to start protecting the women. Um, this hatred for the woman which reaches its climax or apex when uh, they're being killed and slaughtered off is something that's been going on for a long time. It happens in more subtle forms, but the climax is when they get killed. And our women, black women in particular, are internalizing this hatred, which is now making them harder, less sensitive themselves, and seeking independence. Why do black women seek independence? There's a long history where black men could not provide his function to make them realize codependency. That function, before anything, is to protect and provide. Providing and protecting in its highest form would be um, stability economically and making sure that she's not hurt. But in its more subtle forms, black men must start providing comfort. They must protect them from certain things that go on culturally and mentally. And vice versa, but more so, that is what the black man must provide and he must protect the black woman from to keep her in her state where she does not feel as if she has to uh, go out there and sell her body. We put so much emphasis, so much emphasis on material things which breed greed. And this sometimes will lead someone down the path to getting money. The materialism is so high out here. The black man should stop being materialistic. You know, a lot of times women will say, well, I was with him for the money, but at the same time will still be rocking with somebody broke because she's using him. But she doesn't, she can't say what it is about this broke guy that uh, attracts her. We've seen this all the time. Or not even a broke guy, but a guy who doesn't have much material, you know. So we have to stop, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? We have to stop celebrating materialism, you know. I'm going to give you another prime example. The homosexuality thing. It's always been around, but now it's even more prevalent. A lot of these women practicing homosexual acts is due to men looking at it as the thing to do. And we can't forget that it started with men. This down low brother syndrome. But not only that, it came from an outside force locking men up in large numbers during the 90s. It was by 1990s it was over two million people locked up. Mass incarceration to keep us from getting money out of the drug trade. They built a whole industry around the black man. And a lot of those guys was going into the joint and having sex with other men. And they brought that energy back out into the streets. And our women 
being um, internalizing creatures, you know, being those who get impregnated and impressionable more so, took that energy and now you have this rampant homosexuality, homosexual activity. And I'm only calling it like I see it. When I first moved to Highland Park, you saw more gay men than it was women. But you know, with rap, my girl got a girlfriend and all of that and um, all of the mass incarceration and knowing people who've been locked up, I know damn well that the black man started it. So I'm saying this, in essence, we must protect black women out here. We must recognize that there is a massive wave of hatred being perpetuated against black women out here. And even the media, though they're showing this story about our sisters being killed, they're doing it in a way to where we don't empathize or sympathize with these women and we look at them as victims to the sex industry, which has also been going on forever. You know, we forget it's a lot of people that's speaking about, you know, y'all need to stop escorting and prostituting. But at the same time, more than 70% of men have indulged in the sex industry, whether it was porn, strip clubs, or prostitution and tricking themselves. But now they look down upon these females. And the news did that to you. They reported them as being prostitutes. And when they report other black women who've been killed by serial killers, they report them as having drug problems or something like that. That's to desensitize you. That's all that is to do. Because we can't stop these serial killers' mind state from attacking black women. Just like um, all of these other serial killers out here. Ted Bundy, he was attacking college women. You know what I'm saying? So... With that being said, it's not who the person is that drives a serial killer. It is the serial killer psychosis. That's what we need to be speaking about. They could have easily reported those women who did work as an escort, as mothers. They could have reported them as daughters. Or they could have just reported them as who they were. I mean, somebody who escorts or sells their body for three years but has been a mother for 10 years what more are they and we don't know the reasons why they were selling their bodies so let's not be judgmental and let's, let's not allow the media to keep our mind off of what's really real what's really real is there's an asshole out here killing black women and I mean how can he be caught if he is doing it or she is doing it off of escort service, off back page. That means he had to contact them through telephones. They should be able to find the trend of who they last connected with by now. It's been four or five of them missing. Some of them found. You know, there is phone records out here. It's not going to be uh, investigated that aggressively, though, because... They was on back page. And they just prostitute nigger bitches. And I'm saying, we had to put this pressure out here. We had to keep talking about it and don't let the story fizzle out. It was about um, a couple years ago. I, re I know y'all remember this made national news that a, a asshole has several black women in his house dead. This shit ain't nothing new. But it, it hit my city. I spoke on it when it wasn't, but it hit my city. So I'm asking everybody else to keep it in mind. Keep your eyes peeled. Keep speaking about it. And don't allow the media to distort your vision. These are black women being killed by a psychotic asshole who himself needs to be brought to justice. And that doesn't necessarily mean by the police. Because the police have a tendency of fucking up murders. And I'm speaking on close friends of mine, like my man R.I.P. Slim Duncan. His killer got shot in his house and was arrested but released because of insufficient evidence. Well, how could that be if his blood is in the house? Y'all can't do a blood sample? 
you know? My cousin who got killed, yeah, he was breaking in somebody's house, but the dude shot him in the back, then stood over him and shot him in his face. What is that? That's premeditated murder as far as I'm concerned. He got to do sometime. Or my other cousin who got killed on the block in front of everybody. And they stopped investigating it because he was a street nigga, 17 years old. So we got to be mindful of that and realize, man, we can't allow the media to dictate how we view our people and how we handle transgressors against our people. So God be, get your police force on there, man. Because if this sociopathic dude touch one of my relatives or family members, I'm going to be at your doorstep every day. And I'm saying this, we need to support the families and we need to keep those young sisters alive as they are. Young sisters. Not as prostitutes.